Hi, I'm Rick Dior, and today we're going to do bongos. One of my favorite instruments to play, um, you play it with your hands so you can really feel it. Um, unlike timbales, which we just did, which are played by thin dowels, we play mostly bongos with, uh, with our hands. Um, you can use sticks, you can use mallets, either one's fine, don't let anybody tell you anything other than that. But uh, these bongos are JCRs, hope you can see that. So these um, were made by Cali in, 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 Brook, in, the, um, in the Bronx, and they're some of the best bongos made. Uh, they are one piece shell, so they're not stav like normal bongos. So they're hollowed out, which gives them a really different sound than most bongos. So today we're going to go over uh, several types of bongos you can buy. And we'll tell you about some heads, how to tune them. And then in the next bongo video, we'll go over some grooves for my book. So uh, as far as buying bongos, there's a lot of choices. And you don't have to spend a lot of money. These bongos down here, these are some old CP percussion bongos. I got these used for like $75. And they're actually pretty decent. It's hard to tell on the other bongos, but they're not bad. Um, they are stav shelled. Uh, they're a little cheaper made. They're light compared to like the Giovanni bongos I'm going to show you in a minute. But again, for $75, you get them used on eBay, Reverb. This, is, this might be what you want to start with, okay? Now another choice move these over, are these LP Giovanni model bongos. And these are gorgeous. We'll raise them up a little. Um, you know, they got the gold. They're all blinged out. Um, these are really nice. They tend to be a little louder and a little more ringing. So. As opposed to the JCRs, which tend to be drier. Okay, so I use both of these sets ex exclusively when I do when I gig and when I record. But normally my recording set are these JCRs just because they're drier. They're not as loud as the LPs. Um, you know, if you were an engineer, maybe 10 dBs softer overall. But uh, these Giovannis are also ringier. So if you listen. Now, they're not exactly tuned the same. Um, these have, uh, this set has one. Uh, cowhide head on it and one of these Remo new skins. So let's talk about that real quick. Heads. Um, I use all kinds of heads on bongos. I take them off. Uh, I change them out quite often depending on what kind of recording I'm doing. Tighten this here. Um, I brought some heads to show you the difference. So there's originally there um, there were all cowhide heads on bongos maybe goat skin but a cowhide head looks like that okay that's an old jcr head that i got um i got a bunch of replacements from them when i got these bongos so uh these tend to be pretty thick they're very again very dry because uh, the bongos are dry so it's um it's a good match all right so that's cowhide some people call it rawhide. This is a bongo head that a fiber skin bongo head that Remo makes. And these are okay. Um, I wouldn't really recommend them personally. Uh, these are pretty old. I don't even know if you can get them anymore. But I tried it once and I didn't like it, so I took it off. But I, I had it laying around. Now, this is a typical thin cowhide head that you might find on. Um, on a set of matador bongos. 
Now, the thinness of this can be really desirable sometimes, okay? Don't play with sticks, though. You will break it, but you see how thin it is. And this is a rough head, so you can easily do like a moose call on there, you know, where you're, you're wetting your thumb and you're doing that kind of vibrating thing. So that makes it easier. If a head is slick, it's really hard to you hear a little there, but it's really hard to do that thing, that effect, okay? So you should maybe have a set of thinner, I call them hairy heads. They're kind of rough, okay? So you could change those out if you're doing a lot of that. And then finally, I have a new skin head. Now, Evans also makes a version of this, but it's a Remo new skin. These are relatively new. Uh, I know they've been around for a while, but compared to some of the older Remo bongo heads, uh, plastic heads, they're relatively new. And these are really good. They last a long time. The only problem with them, you'll see here, that if you tighten it enough and you have it on there uh, for a while, this top head will basically just start coming off. I've had that happen on quite a few. It just tears out. It's like a coating. It's not the actual entire head. So the head doesn't break all the way through. This just tears out, which is super annoying. So that will happen if you tighten them too much. Um, it mostly happens on the LP drums because they have a longer throw where you can tighten them farther down. It never happens on the JCRs. You see how much higher the rims are on these and on these. These are these comfort rims. and They tend to really clamp down on the head. All right, with the JCRs, they're just the old-fashioned straight rims, which I much prefer, by the way. Um, I don't expect to ever be comfortable playing hand drums, so. But, but you know, so these rims, uh, these are on all the new LPs. They're fine. I prefer the old straight rims. It's not like you're doing rim shots, okay? But you are hitting in congas, you're hitting the heel of your hand. And in bongos, as we'll see in a minute, you're, you're hitting the second joint of your hand a little on the rim but again once you get all calloused up uh, if you can put some tape on there it's not a big deal so these are great heads uh, a good uh, replacement for for the uh, cow skin um, if you don't want to spend the money and you don't want to break them and having to tune them up and down you don't really need to do that with these remos okay now I'll show you one more set of bongos try not to cause too much damage here all right, so these are LP classics. I'm sure you all have seen these. These have the old straight rims. That's wonderful. All right, this is a, a three, uh, I call them tri-bongos. This is good if you're um, an orchestra player and you're doing like Bernstein, because a lot of times his parts call for three bongos. And then uh, this is very handy. All right, uh, but between you and I, this this high bongo is kind of a dog, but it sounds good with mallets and sticks. So that's pretty cool, I guess, you know. All right, but these are good sounding bongos at a reasonable price. They're not as expensive as the Giovanni's. And I don't think you can get these, well, you can't get these JCRs anymore. You might be able to find a set used. And if you do, I jump on that right away, okay? But these are the standard LP classics and they're, they're a really good instrument. All right. So, uh, head-wise, so you can mix and match. So you can use like a new skin on your uh, macho. And by the way, this is the same as the timbales. The larger drum uh, is, is called the hembra, the female, and the smaller drum is the macho. But unlike the timbales, the bongos are set up with the small drum, the macho, to your left if you're a right-handed player. Okay, where timbales, we had the hembra uh, to your left, so you could do those rim shots. All right, so that's just, you don't have to play them that way. That's just the traditional way they're played. And speaking of that, traditionally bongos are played sitting down between your legs. Um, so, you know, when I used to play gigs, I was expected to play that way because it looked authentic, you know, in New York with all the bands. For me, because I'm, I'm, I'm a little guy, you know, my legs don't, you know, go out that far, it's very uncomfortable after a while. So I generally play them on a stand. Um, and normally I'm playing them in big setups anyway with the orchestra or recording or whatever. So they're gonna be on a stand. And that's totally fine to put them on a stand. But again, the authentic way is to play them between your legs with the macho on your left and the hembra on the right, okay? Now, as far as stands go, we'll show you these. 
So this is what I call a clamp stand. Hopefully you can see that. So these are my favorite kinds of stands because uh, they're pretty much no nonsense. You just stick the bongos in there and clamp them down. They will dent the connecting wood piece, as you see there. I don't really care about that, you know. Um, but if you do, if you care about that, the way that looks and the way that's messing up that wood, you might want to go with a different stand. Now, you can put some foam rubber on this clamp stand, but the problem is with that, it, it, the bongos tend to move a little more. You might have seen there, I was straightening them out here and there, but you really got to clamp them down hard. The other stand that you can use is this kind of stand. So this is a, I call it a cloth stand, because <laughs> it uses a piece of, like a belt to, see there, there's no dent. <laughs> it uses a belt to connect the bongos like that. Now these are great. And, <clears throat> excuse me, they do last a long time, but that belt will stretch and wear out. I've actually worn out two of these in my life, which is kind of crazy, but they will break. Um, they have more um, moving parts. There's a thing here where you tighten it up, and you can really clamp it down hard, but it still doesn't feel as secure to me as a clamp stand. But again, there's nothing wrong with these. I have a set of kungas that have has a set of bongos mounted on top of them, and this is what I use for that, okay? So that's a clamp stand with a belt and it doesn't have the other side of that clamp, all right? So that's the other kind you can get. Um, other companies make different kinds of stands, but to me these work great, so that's what I that's what I use. Okay, put this back. Clamp it down. Also, I have to say that whatever stand base you use, make sure it's got nice big rubber feet. Because what will happen is when you start getting into it and hitting these bongos pretty hard, they'll start moving around uh, on you. So, so have it get a heavy stand, very heavy, as heavy as you can get, and have nice big thick rubber feet on the bottom. All right, so today we're going to go over some strokes, and then the next video we'll go over some grooves. Uh, we are going to do one groove today called a martillo, and um, so that groove is sort of like, let's call it... Uh, I got tumbao for bongos, okay? So I use it in sun, um, the rhythm, uh, the dance rhythm, like it can use, be used for mambo. It's used for lots of things. It's defined by that uh, kind of slap on all of the, you know, you might want to call them half notes because we're going to be in cut time, okay? So this is the basic portillo. All right. Now, before I continue, I got to say that bongos is a really individual thing. It's kind of like playing brushes. I used to see, you know, dozens of bongo players in New York. You know, I played with bands that would have like four uh, clubs that would have like four bands a night. So I'd see all these different bongo players and none of them played the same ever. Conga players, they mostly look all the same, pretty much. Timbali players, yeah, mostly all the same. Bongo players, no way. They're all, they all play different. They all use different parts of their hand. They do handful. I've seen all kinds of crazy stuff. So don't worry about that. As long as you get good sounds, that's what matters. And again, don't listen to anybody say, you're doing that wrong. You're doing, it has to sound good. If it sounds good, it is good. Okay? So I'm just going to go over the way that I play, and it may not be the way you play or you're going to play. I would definitely suggest maybe taking some lessons. I did that when I lived in New York with actually quite a few people. I take one lesson, two lessons. I got a lot of different um, input from a lot of different really good players. That helped me tremendously, okay? Um, so let's, let's, let's start out with the main stroke, which is the bongo slap, which is this. Now you see I'm following through. That's how I practice it. So you're using your fingertips. It's not like a slap, like a conga slap. That's a conga slap, where you're using your, your palm and your fingers, and your fingers are hitting a split second later. This kind of slap is 
just fingers all at once and I'm using basically my first three fingers because my pinky's too short to reach that so they stay, stay together but you'll notice the pinky will come off to the side the thumb does not hit so you're using these three fingers and you'll especially feel it on your middle finger okay now I got to say that bongos is tough on your hands just like kungas so you can use some tape on your fingers that's fine uh, I have pretty good calluses so I can play a lot and it won't bother me but I know when I was starting to play my fingers would split and it'd be super painful so I would use band-aids and all kinds of tape and stuff like that I don't have to do that anymore but something you might want to do if you're just starting out so if you're a bongo virgin you got to be careful that you do not hurt yourself you can also bruise your your bone here you got your bones you got to be careful so don't hit too hard just drop it don't force it drop it use use the weight of your um, arm to get that sound okay next um, stroke is the thumb stroke which is this now that can be open or can be closed that all happens depending on what position the rest of your hand is in all right so you don't have to think about closed thumb open thumb the same thing with this slap sometimes it'll be closed because the rest of your or some of your hand will be on the bongo sometimes it'll be open okay so let's go um, slap thumb Now you'll notice that the rest of my fingers are together when I do that. They're not splayed out. They're together. So all right, so you want to kind of develop that. The way it's kind of like the traditional grip, you know, where you're using your thumb. Then you have a finger stroke, which is this. Okay? So that's with these three fingers, again, the pinkies along for the ride, together. So then we'll have thumb and fingers. You'll notice a difference in pitch um, between those strokes. All right? So, you'll, and you also have an open stroke on bongos, but because the bongos are so dry, it's kind of hard to hear an open stroke. You mostly hear it on the hembra. And that's done a little ways up on the hand, just a little more. So almost to this, um, you know, the between the third joint and the second joint of your finger. It's not like the conga op um, open stroke where you're, you're doing that. It's back farther. So as opposed to the slap, and then the open. So the, the slap should be um, a little bit higher than the open stroke. Okay, so unlike kungas, these pitches are less defined. They're less farther apart. Now, speaking of pitches, let's talk for a second about how to tune these things. Uh, just like kungas, there's several methods how to tune them, but I mostly tune them in fourths. I like to tune my top drum to like anywhere from an F-sharp to a G, a high F-sharp, so that sounds like an F-sharp to me, okay? Um, so pretty high, all right? You don't want to break the head. You'll get to a point on a bongo where you're tightened it so much you can't even go anymore. So at that point, you're going to have to stop anyway because it just won't, you won't have enough force to tighten it. And don't use some sort of socket thing to do it because you'll tear the head out like I did, I showed you before, okay? So, and then the bottom... The hembra, the larger drum, that could be tuned like a fourth below, fifth below, anywhere from fourth to a fifth. You could even do a major third if you wanted to, um, but they need to have some sort of uh, wider, you know, don't tune them in seconds. They need to have a wider pitch um, area, although they're, they're smaller drums, so they don't have as much tuning range as a conga, which can, you know, you can tune that pretty low or pretty high especially if it's uh, your middle drum, the conga drum, not the quinto, not the tumba, all right? 
So these particular drums I consider that a pretty good tuning for these drums. All right, so with all these strokes, let's do the martillo rhythm slow. So it's slap, thumb, fingers, open. So if the right hand just does this, so right here we're doing a slap and then an open or kind of a tap. And the left hand is just rocking back and forth. Now you can also do that opposite. In other words, you can start with your fingers and then thumb or thumb then fingers. Either way is fine. And I've seen guys and gals play it both ways, okay? So again, it's slap, thumb, open, fingers. Slap, thumb, open, fingers. And here it is opposite. All right, so you want to practice that first very slowly many times. And don't, don't hit hard, just, just play it nice and light, play it a lot, okay? Then you're going to start accenting that slap, so. And again, many times, all right? And, and don't hurt yourself to stay nice and relaxed. Use your wrist. Finally, you're going to try to do some embellishments in there. So you can play your thumb louder, your fingers louder. You could even play more open. I'll show you what I mean. So. Okay, so that's the language of the bongos. We're doing lots of embellishments, lots of accents, lots of different tones. There's other things you can do. You can do all kinds of taps. You can do... There's a lot of things. We'll get into that when we do our next groove video. But for now, just worry about uh, those four basic sounds. Again, the thumb, the fingers, the slap, and the open, okay? And, and you'll be fine if you do that at first. And then try to play with some music just doing that rhythm, slow music. You might want to start with a cha-cha. Okay, just like um, Now, one thing, one more thing before we stop. Uh, there are some little grace notes that you should be aware of, and you might want to practice those separately as well. So just like snare drumming, there's flams, but they're played super open. So um, you probably saw in that solo I played for you at first how open they were. So those open flams add to the character of the music. They also help you tripletize uh, these things. So, so it sounds authentic and it phrases over the bar line. Okay, there's also kind of, um, I guess you can call them roughs or drags, so, or, so there'd be like a three-stroke rough, so, in snare drumming we call that a drag, but in bongo playing we're not doubling it, so we're going, All right, so flams and roughs. So practice all of those rudimentary exercises before you, you jump on these, um, these rhythms that are going to be in my book. So the next video will be on the grooves um, in my book. Thanks.